thank you very much, sir, for kind introduction. And uh, it is really unfortunate that we don't have uh, Ajna Sada uh, uh, today with us, as uh, she is not uh, well. And uh, I'm very fortunate that I'm presenting her talk uh, because I, I really closely follow her work in type 1 diabetes. And uh, if you are really passionate about type 1 diabetes, you should once visit her center. And uh, I have been there. Uh, Bansi Sabu sir may have visited her. Uh, Dr. Mahira has also visited her. Uh, so how to empower the patient, how to motivate them, it is really uh, astonishing uh, her work and, and to see her very closely and to know about her. So my today's topic is uh, tips to successful care in type 1 diabetes. But before starting that, I want to tell you that I, I shared one of the recent incident of type 1 diabetes and pregnancy with Bansi Sabu sir, that what not to do is very important. Sometimes we forget and uh, one of my type 1 diabetic patient, I, I got the call from ICU and gynecologist referred me that patient and told me that uh, she is in DK. She was uh, seventh month pregnant and she was in DK and that was third time uh, that she was admitted. The patient was from, uh, was from Surat and she was referred in uh, Ahmedabad ICU just because her blood sugars were not in good control. She was already on 150 units of uh, bolus insulin and there was no uh, uh, basal insulin. That was quite a surprise for me. And it was not a small city or rural area. It was from Surat. So it should be uh, basal bolus therapy. Uh, I, I don't know. God is protecting or what, whatever uh, uh, is there. But that patient uh, did not have a single complication even to her fetus. Uh, and and that, that was really fortunate from our part. So for type 1, at least we should learn that patients should be on basal bolus therapy. The uh, basal insulin is very important to avoid uh, the condition of diabetic ketoacidosis and that we all need to learn all the time. With this, I'll start talk of Dr. Achina Sada. Even I didn't change her name as I don't want to take away her name and her slides and her work. So uh, it's an art uh, and a science that you need to learn that art of treating type 1. And sometimes that art can't be uh, learned because uh, it is something related to your empathy and, and your passion for type 1 diabetes work. So education, motivation, and counseling that is related to insulin technology uh, and uh, regime uh, pumps and CGMS and carb counting. This all stuff are really difficult to educate to our those rural patients. Even in, uh, in our urban areas, our most of the patients, many of the things we can uh, make them learn like uh, insulin uh, uh, and carb, uh, insulin and pumps and CGMS, but carb counting and and uh, uh, the correction factor, this all stuff are really very difficult to make them understand. So approach to type one diabetes care, where as I already told, empathy lies the first. If you are really passionate about type one diabetes, then only you can work and you should work. Otherwise, you should refer the patient who are really treating type 1 diabetes and, and every day they are seeing or at least once in a week they are spending time for type 1 diabetes. So uh, this is very important. Engagement to your patients, your uh, uh, parents of your patients is also very important. And the empowerment already Dr. Meena Chabra ma'am has explained what is empowering to your patient. It is all about uh, education. So individualization of care is also very important. Uh, every patient has different uh, problem. Like some patient has problem in buying insulin. Some patient has problem in buying costlier insulin. That we need to understand mindset of patient as well as their socioeconomic status of the patient. Monitoring, uh, already uh, Dr. Minal Mohit has explained, 
uh, monitoring how it is important. She explained how uh, SMBG, CGMS are uh, there in the role and, and how we can change the patient's life uh, through good monitoring. Physical activity, the most neglected part, I would say, uh, if you uh, I have really seen, uh, we don't have data for our center, but I, I can say that around 70 to 80% of our patients, they don't follow our physical activity guidelines or, or they don't follow whatever we say. But for type 1 kids, uh, unfortunate part, we can say that, yes, they, they go to play outside in, in uh, kindergarten and everywhere. So, so some, somewhere they do some physical activity. But for adult type 1 diabetic cases, it is, uh, it is not followed mostly. Follow-up and investigations. We should have structured follow-up plan and we should ask them on what they, they have to come and, and uh, investigations, that also we need to explain them. At least HB1C should be done every th third month. Uh, the, uh, yesterday only when I, when I went to one of uh, 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 trust where I go for type 1 diabetic kids treatment, and, and they say that uh, one of the patient came and she came after two years of follow-up and she didn't even check her HB1C. She came up with log, a logbook which was really forged uh, in, in her logbook, every data was around 100 and 150. And I just came to know that it, 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 it is not possible that you don't follow up for two years and you, your blood sugar is not going above 200. So I asked her in front of her parent, uh, her mother, that did you forge this data? And she accepted, yes, I, I, I do some wrong thing in my logbook. So it is very common, and, and you all must have experienced one or other day that your patient is doing something wrong in their logbook. So HB1C is important for this reason. Maybe three months, not possible in three months, then at least in five to six months, they should have one HB1C. So emergency care should also be provided, as we have learned from Bansi sir, that we manage DK in, in daycare uh, settings. Most of our DK, uh, DK are treated in daycare settings. So we call them for one day. If their acetone is coming down, then we call them again to second day, and, and we treat them in two to three days. This is our uh, type of treating DK. And, and most of the cases, they, they don't need ICUs. So uh, medical nutrition therapy, this is also one of the very important pillar, but it is also uh, unfortunately not followed very well. So uh, that, it, that also should be taken care and individualization of care is important, this is why. So creating a team already, uh, Archana, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Meena Chabra ma'am has already explained that uh, educators, counselors, leaders with type 1 diabetes, coach, nutritionist, and the one thing here uh, it is not mentioned is psychologist, which is also very important. But uh, RSSDI and, uh, and uh, Diabetes India has taken very good uh, step that they have make, uh, made leaders in type 1 diabetes. And those leaders are taking care of uh, those patients, their parents, and, and they have made the team. And this, these leaders are working beautifully uh, 24 by 7 for type 1 diabetes management, and they are helping a lot. So maintaining an uh, inter-visit communication channel uh, that are helplines, WA group, sorry, I don't know what is WA group, anyone, WhatsApp group, okay. So I, I could not ask Archana ma'am what is that. But yes, we, uh, we have WhatsApp groups for our type 1 diabetic kids. Uh, call your buddy. Uh, online meets and social media. We know that Archana Ma'am is uh, doing a wonderful job in online and uh, social media meets and, and we are also part of those meets regularly and, and uh, uh, it is helping our patients and parents, especially caregivers, uh, very beautifully. So uh, maintaining documentations, registration, investigations and clinical part or the treatment part, it is also very important, and we are seeing that documentation of type 1 diabetes is very poor, though uh, there are many registries like SWEET, 
and and uh, many of our doctors are part of it but but we we want our own registry of type 1 diabetes and rssdi is working on type 1 diabetes registry and 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 hopefully it will be done within next uh, 6 to 8 months right sir so uh, let's all join together for uh, type 1 diabetes registry so focus on first month is very important for newly diagnosed type 1 diabetic patient a new family is really vulnerable they are traumatized and blood sugar uh, fluctuate and doses are not yet settled and in, you might be seeing them uh, taking opinions of a different part of uh, medicine alternate medicine and it is very unfortunate as many of the patients when they go into honeymoon phase they think that this is the reversal of type 1 diabetes the reversal of type 1 diabetes is not possible and and we are seeing through alternate medicine that many of uh, 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 doctors they are claiming that type 1 diabetes also can be reversed after a few years or few months and and we we need to educate them that type 1 diabetes is your friend for life and busting myths around type 1 diabetes is uh, important for this reason uh, addressing possible honeymoon phase emphasis on uh, insulin always you can't stop your insulin especially your basal insulin you should not ever stop your basal insulin if you really want to avoid dk never stop basal insulin there should not be any excuse for stopping insulin warning against fraud alternate therapy uh, uh, perfecting insulin and monitoring techniques learning to manage hypoglycemia i would say hypoglycemia is one of the really rate limiting factor in type 1 diabetes management and good glycemic control because whenever type 1 kid gets hypoglycemia they tend to eat a sweet and it becomes an habit uh, a habit uh, of eating sugar just because uh, they they uh, they really want to get land into uh, hypoglycemia and they they get the chance to eat the sweet so uh, looking out for comorbidities and individualization of treatment is also very uh, important and this is how hand holding can be uh, promoted insulin regimes i am not going very deep as uh, 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 this august audience uh, don't need uh, this introduction of all the insulins as they all know uh, but insulin regimens uh, for that ma'am has beautifully structured here options for all we should check those options then no premix uh, insulin please uh, i want uh, i want this orange or red thing to be amber and and not uh, uh, orange or red and and the last one insulin pump for all those who can should be green one that should be a suggestion just for this ppt so monitoring and uh, logging though all the guidelines suggest that at least 3 to 4 times in a day your blood sugar should be checked uh, but mem has beautifully shown this slide that we should ask the patient to check at least two uh, two times uh, two to three times in a week then one times uh, one day you should check for six uh, six times uh, cgms already uh, minal mohit ma'am has talked and it should be tried at least once uh, in a three months or a six months it depends on patient how affording it is this is the uh, patient of archana ma'am who uh, who is on insulin pump she is uh, aged around 4 to 5 years but i i guess uh, metronic pump of 780 g is allowed after 6 years of age but i have also few of the patients whom i have tried insulin pump before 6 years of age if the patient uh, takes care of those insulin pump uh, well so nutrition part a balanced plate identify macros and visual carb counting and carb counting is very important but i'm not going into detail but this is part of our nutritionists and they should take it uh, uh, as uh, uh, good as it is possible so self meal planning uh, is uh, is advisable and every family can learn to eat healthy so this is the patient of a very f uh, rural area uh, from uh, aurangabad that ma'am has shown this photo in last one of the meeting before two months as well yes sambhaji nagar now it is aurangabad sambhaji nagar yes so uh, 
uh, she already explained this patient that uh, what is importance of carb counting and she is doing her uh, on her own. She is around eight years old and, and uh, she is doing it beautifully. So every patient can be uh, explained. It doesn't uh, matter whether she is from any uh, rural part of uh, uh, the area. So follow up, uh, use uh, ISPAD, uh, ISP and RSSDI or make your own protocol of follow-up, whichever way a regular structured follow-up and screening is must. And uh, we all know that what reports to be done in type 1 diabetes regularly and annually. So uh, these are a few photos how she does her uh, uh, educational work or uh, awareness programs regularly and, and her uh, this awareness programs mainly are on every Saturday. So education and its tools, every family with type 1 diabetes can be and must be educated irrespective of literacy status and, and we already saw uh, uh, see one example. And uh, these are few the games. Uh, by uh, uh, those games, uh, uh, she explained uh, her uh, 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 type one diabetes kids how to uh, how to manage type one diabetes with the games. And this is a unique kind of earthen pot that she has made. And and uh, uh, this earthen pot uh, can be made with fifty or seventy rupees, and and it can take care of those rural kids who don't have privilege to have a refrigerator at their home. So uh, peer group activity, it is very important. Uh, so they should feel that I'm not alone. They should feel, they should uh, see all other different patients, how they are taking care. They should be invited to different camps and uh, uh, edu uh, educational activities. If they can do it, uh, then I can do it. Uh, sharing and learning should be advocated uh, social acceptance uh, psychological acceptance and experimental learning should also be there and uh, introduce new people with type 1 diabetes to experience champions leaders with type 1 diabetes make uh, motivating educators so uh, these are few pictures of her patient so it is still easier said than done Always we need to do more and more for type 1 diabetes. It is always undone. And uh, that is how easy diabetes data software is uh, to use. Uh, any questions? So let us do, is, uh, do it together. Every child with type 1 diabetes deserve to thrive in their life. With this, I'll conclude my talk. And if we have any question, we have Meena Chabra, ma'am, and uh, Dr. Meenal Mohit, uh, if she's around.